If you're looking for a new operating system for your PC, maybe because Microsoft is ending support on your system or you want an efficient, interesting and fun experience, then the first step of your journey is to choose a so-called Linux distribution. But there are so many of them. How will you ever find the right one? In today's video, I'm going to show you Sorin OS 17, a modern and easy to use Linux operating system that lives by the promise to provide a better, faster, easier, more secure and privacy respecting experience for your PC. Spoiler alert, there are some things that we need to talk about. Sorin OS 17 is powered by a modified version of the GNOME desktop environment and comes with a traditional taskbar, an application menu with a strong Windows 7 and 10 resemblance and of course all the other quick controls that you can expect. Since we're using GNOME, we also get access to its advanced overview, which is very useful for organizing or finding open windows. If you don't like the taskbar approach or you find its configuration too big, then you can always select a different layout in the Sorin appearance settings. I for once prefer a more default GNOME experience myself. If you bought Sorin OS Pro, then you can also select several more, but more on this later. And of course, you also get the other usual stuff like dark mode, accent colors, wobbly windows and very neat advanced tiling for quarter snapping and an automatic selection of which windows you want to pin as well. A very cool gimmick is also the reintroduced cube overview and 3D window switcher. I mean, they look kinda cool. Settings wise, Sorin OS also provides you with an extended set of options like fractional scaling and VNC remote connections. And very interesting, a graphical firewall configurator if that's something that you need. The software store is easy to understand, automatically comes with flatback support, giving you access to a bunch more applications and since Sorin OS is based on Ubuntu, you can also add additional repositories via a GUI if you ever run into a certain niche problem. The GNOME file manager also supports more network share protocols out of the box, which can be quite beneficial if you have a NAS or connect to a file server. So what you get is essentially a hybrid between the best of GNOME, mainly being the simplicity of interfaces, the advanced overview and integrations with online services, but also the best of KDE Plasma, another desktop environment with a taskbar and a couple of additional features. If you're looking to run certain Windows applications on it as well, then Sorin OS also makes it easier to find out how to do that. I guess we can conclude that Sorin OS is very beginner friendly and basically offers everything you need out of the box. Well, there are some things that aren't so great about it. For once, Sorin OS 17, while well, using the GNOME desktop environment, is using a very mixed version, whereas some applications are newer than others. This leads to some inconsistencies in terms of looks, scaling, but also missing features in some regards. The quick settings for example don't feature some extended selections and the settings are missing recent polishing. One of the most common problems that GNOME was known for in the past was the absence of icons in the file picker, which was also carried over to Sorin OS unfortunately. By the way, I should also mention that Sorin OS is not as often updated as other Linux distributions. While it does get security updates and fixes, if you're someone who likes to buy bleeding edge hardware, then it might not work on Sorin OS right away. So let's recap. Sorin OS is an easy to understand Linux distribution that combines the best of GNOME's workflow with a taskbar and more advanced features like proper scaling and tiling. It comes with good application support, utilities and customization options which are limited but enough for most in my opinion. While its kernel and packages can be a bit older than other Linux distros, it's not that bad and the issues that you might discover are more minor annoyances. So can I recommend Sorin OS? Honestly speaking, the slightly outdated kernels might become a problem in the future, but at the moment I think I actually can. Their website alone is a great starting point when getting into Linux. You get images, animated showcases, a step-by-step -step installation tutorial and even fixes if something doesn't work right away. For companies, personal support or even more features and themes, Sorin OS also offers a pro edition, which you only need to pay for once. In the future, they also plan to offer a Linux management tool, which can be used to enroll, control and monitor computers, which would be a huge step towards getting businesses to use it. 
I'm personally still more a fan of distributions that offer native desktop environments out of the box. But I think that Sorin OS is in a good spot nonetheless. It's not the fastest or newest, and we'll probably not see some quality of life patches if GNOME releases some. But I don't think that this makes it bad. It's not a distro that I would recommend if you're a gamer, but it is the distro that I would currently recommend if someone asks me which distro is the best to get into Linux. Since Orin OS allows you to change its style, you can easily get into it. And once you know what you like, you can always swap it for something else afterwards. It's a really good distribution for absolute beginners, but also those who just want a working system. And that's where I'll leave it. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like, and why don't you also subscribe to the channel while you're at it? I'm really curious about your thoughts on Sorin OS. Is it too old? Are there things that you disagree on? Let us know in the comments down below. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.